Hey there, Dan Martell here, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. And in this episode, I'm gonna share with you how to create a social impact giving uh, process for your business. If you've ever heard of a B Corp or a way to align not only doing uh, well, but doing good by doing well. So I'm gonna share with you guys how to dive into this. And at the end, I'm gonna share with you a resource that I created with my good friend, Melissa, to really help founders understand how to align the impact side of their community and giving back as well as the financial areas of their business. Let's get into it. So one of the things that happens often as a coach is once I've helped people, you know, achieve incredible results, things that I, you know, I feel super lucky to to work with founders that that not only meet but they surpass their wildest dreams when they start working with me only because I allow them to expand the possibilities. Well, I was working with one client and um, they actually hit their number, right? It was a million a month in profit every month. And as a founder that bootstrapped, you know, for nine years of literally just grinding, 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 it just was unfathomable. Here's what's crazy is when they got to that level, they realized that they weren't as driven. It wasn't like there was any problem solved anymore. We built out their executive leadership team. We got clear on their scorecards, their cadences, their rhythms. We really built a, you know, a growth engine for their business. And now they were kind of asking themselves, what is the purpose? Why are we doing this? What is, you know, if we make more money, if we grow more, what is the, the reason for that? And that's when I shared with them this framework. So I actually have a very good friend called Melissa Kalikste, C-A-L-I-X-T-E. You can find her online. Melissa is the person that I've always called in when I've had founders like my client that was struggling with aligning and finding a way to make their business not only do uh, do well, but do good in the process. So you've seen this trend of B Corps. You've seen a trend of the, you know, the, the buy one, give one kind of offers like the Warby Parkers or the Tom Shoes. That's kind of the concept. I've always had it part of my life because I realized a long time ago, what drives me is not making more money, even though, you know, I'm super blessed and lucky to have become financially wealthy when I was in my 20s. Uh, it's about just giving back. It's about um, understanding that the more value I create in the world and I capture, the more I, good I can do. So in the days of Spheric, it was Kiva. We used to donate for our clients uh, every year. We would make a huge donation to Kiva on, in their name on their behalf. Same thing with Flowtown. Another, so if you never heard of Kiva, it's an online site where you can support entrepreneurial women uh, and men all over the world in third world countries, you know, by doing microloans. And then um, more recently, my creators program where I work with at-risk youth and help them build their confidence and, um, you know, build businesses uh, through that entrepreneurial journey. So that to me has just always been part of it, but I wanted to kind of break down what I learned with Melissa, share it with you so that you can start kind of coming up with some creative ideas of aligning not only the revenue growth, but your impact potential for your business. Number one, connect your core. At the essence of impact, I think it has to be aligned with who you are and what matters to you. So the question I like to ask my coaching clients is, what wrong do you wanna write in the world? What's broken? What pain maybe did you go through you know, as an adolescent, as a teenager, as a child, that you would love to help other people um, avoid and or if they're going through it, get through it easier, right? I think that it's really important to align with that. Um, and, you know, I just feel blessed that I'm, I actually sit on the board of a company called Pila, pilacase.com, uh, incredibly fast growing uh, company Jay-Z invested, so I'm a co-investor with Jay-Z and, and that's why I joined the board. Um, and through that organization, we actually went through the process of becoming a B Corp because at their core, that is part of their mission to kind of rid the world of you know products that don't have a graceful end of life. And I think that if you can connect you know, the core of, of what drives you in your business and your mission statement to the activities and revenue drivers in your business, that's where you start to build, you know, really an unfair advantage. Number two, select the give. So as I mentioned, we want to align whatever um, 
thing we're doing. So whatever area of the business we want to give with our business. So if it's, you know, 1%, you know, Mark Cuban, Mark Cuban, Mark Benioff, uh, the other Mark from Salesforce, he wrote an incredible book called Compassionate Capitalism. And in there, he talked about the 1% solution. So that's a framework. There's a bunch of different frameworks that I'm going to share with you later on that's going to allow you to understand the, the different ways to give back or selecting the give. The 1% is a great one where you say 1% of our profit, 1% of our resources, and 1% of our time, we're going to donate it to um, charities or organizations in our community that can benefit from that resource, right? That's clear alignment. You know, as I mentioned, Tom Shoes, buy one pair of shoes, give one pair of shoes. Many companies have gone down that path, but you want to ideally align what your business does. So for me, I coach entrepreneurs, right? I coach literally some of the best B2B SaaS founders, very blessed and lucky to do that across the world, pretty much clients in every continent. And that helps fund our creators program so that I can help at-risk youth. That's a very you know, uh, near and dear area of my life. If you don't know my story, you can search uh, The Power of Belief on my YouTube channel and you can kind of watch that. But um, being able to know that the work and the impact that I, I get to have with my coaching clients directly uh, affects my ability to give more to those at-risk youth. It's just a winning combination that I can't encourage you enough to explore if this, this speaks to you. Number three, DIY versus partner. So there's really two options. If you're thinking of doing some kind of charitable component or impact component, community, et cetera, there's either do it yourself or partner. The two ways I think about this is one, if something already exists and there's an opportunity for partnership, but really there's two things. It's do you want to go fast? If you wanna move fast and really just add something to your business right now so you can align your interests, then just partner. And then if you want to be more focused and, and be more involved in the creative aspect and it's really near and dear to your heart, then go DIY, do it yourself. But those are kind of the two areas that I think you can either partner, find somebody currently doing and really amplify and support that. And I'll talk more about that in a sec. Or you can do it yourself and, and focus and make it part of even your operations of the business and have somebody dedicated to that component, even if it's half time. Number four, partner path. So this is something I work with Melissa on to really understand, but if you're gonna go down the partner route, some of the key lessons learned there is to make sure that you align your expectations. Too often, I've seen this, one of my good friends uh, partnered with a charity um, in Haiti, and over time he realized that the charity that they partnered with were just, they weren't aligned with his specific outcomes and even how he treated the, you know, the process of fundraising. It just, the values were misaligned. So. Number one, if you're gonna go down a partner route, it's important to talk to the person in charge who owns or runs the, the, the executive director and really have a conversation about like, here's what our organization's willing to do. We want, we're looking for a partner like yourselves to do this. Here's our expectations. Do you expect to sit on the board? Do you expect to have you know, recognition? Do you want to be, do you wanna do it anonymously? There's a bunch of different options, but if you go the partner path, you need to make sure that you have that conversation to not only, set the expectations, but also make sure that you're measuring the impact. So if you say, look, we're gonna contribute on average this amount of capital every year to your organization through our operations, we wanna make sure that you're measuring these things. Here's what we wanna know. We wanna know how many people were fed. We wanna know how many people were clothed. We wanna know how many people were sheltered. Whatever charity or community give you want to align yourself with, if you're going the partner path, you wanna make sure that you set the measurements, set the expectations, set the involvement that you're looking to have with that organization before you even start to go down that path. Number five, influence and inspire the double eyes. Here's the thing. Most people, especially Canadians out there, uh, you know, my home country, people will want to not brag. They want to not share their giving um, and the impact they're having because they just feel like it's against the essence of why they're doing it. Here's what I know. When we shine our light, when we share with the world the um, the, the community involvement, the donations we're making, the impact we're having on a pure give, then it will influence and inspire other people. So one, it influences key members to potentially join your team. That is probably the highest ROI. When you can get somebody that says, hey, I love the fact you guys are involved in this organization and I, and I dug into what you guys do and I'm currently doing this, but I think I would love to join your mission, your vision, your values um, because they're aligned. 
that is huge. So having leveraging that activity, because it's really supposed to be a flywheel. It's an impact component. We want to have both impact on the community, but also impact on the business to drive positive outcomes. Hiring is one of those. Partnerships is another, right? So make sure that you share that. And then inspire. I mean, if you don't share your message, if you don't share with other people the incredible work you're doing, if you start donating tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars um, to these charities, uh, then you're doing it in a vacuum. And I think you're really not even allowing those charities or those community partners to leverage your involvement to get more people on board. Right, so it's very important for me when I've been involved in capital campaigns, you know, raising capital for different outcomes in my local community, having my name involved, sharing it on social media, letting the organizing committee uh, uh, use that that uh, in their marketing material so that they can say, hey, you know, if you're a notable person in your community, let them use that to pull people into that capital raise. That is influence and leverage. So quick recap, how to create a social impact giving model for your business. Uh, Number one, connect to your core. Number two, select the give. Number three, DIY versus partner. Number four, partner path. And number five, influence and inspire. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I want to share with you my impact giving flywheel. I co-created this with my friend Melissa, where we talk about the different strategies, the different uh, fundraising models, et cetera. So I give you the list for you to start thinking about and answering the questions. What is, is close to your heart? What things do you want to get out of this this impact model. So the worksheet will walk you through the questions you answer. It will also give you the strategies and the considerations to think about how you want to go partner versus DIY. And at the end of it, you'll at least get closer to making a decision, maybe something you can share with your team to get alignment, um, to just really make this part of your business model. I think that it is one of the coolest things when we can not only build an incredible business, create a lot of value for our customers, but align all of that effort and energy with also having a positive impact in the world, in our community, the way that aligns and resonates with us at our core. So if you like this video, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel. And if there's anybody else you think that this video will resonate with, feel free to share it with them directly. Uh, As per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. Ta-ta-ta!